Hey, what's up? It's your girl Melissa Ford, and you are checking out Miss Drama TV. There's a moving in a piece that I'd love to see. Gotta raise my soul to tell you how I feel. I definitely had a plan to once I once I seem to have mastered one area mm -hmm. of um, entertainment, right. I just didn't see any limitations on anything else. So I mean, I ended up in radio, just like you. Yeah. I, I had a, my own show on Sirius Radio, yeah. BET, um, Stars in Black, uh, ESPN. I was blessed to work with all three of those networks. I know. It's it's been an interesting run. It <laughs> is. It is, and I, I definitely want to touch on those things. But you know, of course. Uh, you you can't avoid you know the the video model years, mm -hmm. and I say that because I, I'm always thinking like you know if somebody mentions Melissa Ford, it it just seems that it always comes oh she yeah she's the model that mm -hmm. was in the video and mm -hmm. this that now of course you've done so many other things mm -hmm. in addition to that mm -hmm. does it bother you at any any point in time when you hear okay they refer you back to this certain era or time of your career. Not really, just because um, I never did anything that I wasn't you know that I, I was ashamed of, you okay. know, having participated in music videos. Right. Um, the running joke with me and video directors that I've worked with in, the, with in the past is just how vocal I was about not doing certain things mm -hmm. or not wearing certain things. I just, I'm like, this is going to be a three minute video that's going to be so heavily ed edited that why am I going to kind of, you know, sacrifice myself mm -hmm. just so, I don't know, just so somebody can get their rocks off. So I just, I was always very vocal about that. So I understand and I, I kind of take it as a compliment that, you know, that, that, that my image was so... I guess powerful that it's ingrained in people's right. memories and so I look at it as a compliment I know that not all it, it, not every single time that it's brought up it's being said in a very complimentary type of mm -hmm. way mm -hmm. and then the only thing that I can do is just educate people on what my own personal past was and I, I think that's very eloquently said I mean at times you know we definitely hear the negativity and, you know, Corinne Stephan's book really kind of exacerbated the, yeah. the whole thing. And I'm just like, and you know, everybody turned to me and they were like, microphone in hand, like, what do you have to say about exactly. this, Melissa? Is this the, is, was this what you saw happen? Was this a regular occurrence? And I was just like, not really. Those were not my experiences. I'm not saying she's lying. I'm saying that those are her experiences on other video sets, the, the ones I was on. For the most part, me and the other girls knew each other. We were all Canadian girls, so we were all kind of, you know, had this kind of, uh, we were friends. Right, you know what I'm saying? Bond or sister it, or yeah, yeah. Right? We hung out with each other after um, after taping wrapped up. It it really, I mean, for lack of a better word, it really was as innocent as I'm portraying it. I'm not right. saying that anybody wasn't doing. I can't check up on whatever he was course. doing behind closed doors, but for the most part. I didn't see a lot of debauchery and just right. outlandish behavior. And, and I, of course, that's what you know people were, will, will assume because mm -hmm. of the fact of Corinne Stephens, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Now, on the note of her, just quickly touching on that subject, I don't know if you knew this, but she recently released the fact that the book that she wrote was a farce, was a lie, was not true. And she is now reneging on basically everything that she said. And, her, and if you could see uh, uh, Melissa right now, her eyes are wide open. Um, and so she's recanting. Why? Almost, well, 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 the story is thickening as, as, as it continues to go on. But this is what I'm hearing. Right. So she's releasing another book, I guess, so hopefully portray it more accurately. I don't know. But whatever the case is, two questions. Right? It's a two-part question to this. A, do you feel that maybe... She uh, did lie, and that the story that we all became to hear, you know, all became to know as, as quote unquote the truth, was a lie in your opinion. Or, or B, do you feel like somebody, maybe artist related, may have some interesting uh, uh, problems with the book and now have decided to maybe make it a, a problem for current? I would say that that's a hell of a de delayed reaction. <laughs> I mean, when did the book come out? 2005, 2006? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a while ago. It's like, are we still talking about the her first book? She's printed th two or three other right, since then. Right. I don't, you know, I don't really read blogs, so I haven't. I, you're telling me something new. Yeah. I didn't know that she recanted on everything. Yeah. Again, you have to deal with something, and I think that you know, having 
this brand, that's mm-hmm. what you have to deal with. It's like this constant, you know, okay, some who's gonna say something today? Right. You know, who's who's gonna have their issues today? Or right. what artist, you know, that I've worked for that maybe I didn't even know I, I didn't smile at him the way that he liked to smile is gonna say something foolish today. Right. You know, and I'm just like, wow, you know, how does, you know, um, a, a, a woman who's been able to do a lot of great things in regards to not only her career, but also in her, you know, initiatives, you know, still be able to feel like, I can have a normal life, you know? Is there some normalcy in your life? There's a lot point? There's a lot of normalcy, and that's because I have the most incredible group of friends, girlfriends, you know, I have a, I have a wonderful support system around me, and, you know, my true friends are the ones that don't bring drama to me. They're not going to call me up and say, guess what media take up said about you today? Or right. guess what so-and-so said about you today? They don't bring that stuff That's to me right. because they know that it's probably going to upset me. The last thing my true friend wants to do is upset me. So they don't listen to that. They don't also don't go out. They, don't, they also don't, like, need to tell me, oh, I had to defend you today. I had to do this. I had to do that. They do that just because that's what they want to do because... Well, I'm their friend, and I would do it for them. And it's so, genuine. And it's very, very genuine. So I have what most people wouldn't know is I have a really great and kind of extensive group of friends. And I've got, you know, when you've got the admiration of honest critics, mm-hmm. that also, you know, kind of resonates, and you can take solace in that fact. You know, I mean, there's people that are highly respected, like Dr. Michael Eric Dyson, who is my mentor. Um, who doesn't have he, he doesn't have enough good things to say about me and he supports my career so does his wife who is my surrogate mother Marcia Dyson um, we're about to embark on a whole bunch of projects mm. together um, and it's just I've, I've got just when I say just by saying I've got the respect of honest critics lets me know that the naysayers that focus on stupid insignificant BS Okay, whatever. Exactly. Whatever floats your boat. I take solace in the fact that these people wouldn't have anything to do with me if I was what the naysayers say about me. Exactly. You know? and I mean, and, and, and that... Um, you know, I, I did an interview with another one of my very, very good friends, also a very respected, honest critic, Teray, mm-hmm. and we discussed, you know, the, the world of doing videos, and because we work together on BET, so right. he, he knows my multi... Uh, Dimensionality, you know what I'm saying. So mm-hmm. he he's very much aware that I'm a I'm a I'm much more layered than a lot of people want to give me credit exactly. for. So you know we had a very long conversation t- talking similarly of, of of what we're discussing right now, less um, about the foundations and philanthropy, but more just about school education, um, the video world, how it played a, a factor in my decision making, and all that other good stuff. Mm-hmm. And you think. Some people saw it, and some people still make comments. I'm like, you must not have seen it. It's just right. people are really focused on just one aspect, and they just, I don't know. It's it's hard for us to look at somebody and 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 I guess accept their personal growth, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, but that's just unfortunately the reality. I mean, yeah. I've got. I'm I'm just gonna have to work that much harder mm-hmm. to you know make something else about my brand stand out mm-hmm. as much as my um the the visuals that are still you know that float around the interview the the internet on me i felt terrible that people would come in and i felt like they were spending their rent or cable money on a bottle of hennessy just to take a photo with me i felt i just didn't feel it didn't feel good you know and i couldn't shut that part off you know i just that's that's the part that kind of sucks about being aware that your eyes are open all the time that you're gonna see stuff that you don't like and you're gonna to have to reconcile it inside of yourself. Right. Um, and I, I have that same issue, so I could totally identify. So at what point did you say this is not gonna work? Then? Well, no, no, no. There, there was there was no point. I mean, I I finished my term and okay. you know I left I left um, amicably. I still have uh, quite a few friends over there, and um, when I heard that Takara was you know, going to be the lead spokeswoman the next year and then Hennessy Arts year. I was like, Takara is the most awesome choice. She was, she's so bubbly and she's so, like, people gravitate towards her. I was like, she really always should have had this gig. Mm -hmm. I really actually just wanted to be in the creative department, you know, handling marketing and advertising. That's really what I would love to do because being a brand, I've had to create my own product. Right. You know, so I know something about that. So that was more like kind of, Come to find out after having done the tour, that's really what I've actually I actually would have wanted to do right. versus 
go on the road and then promote it, you know, mm-hmm. physically in, in the liquor stores and, you know, everywhere else, in the clubs that we had to go into. Yeah. yeah. The jewel and the crown for Less Is More for me, um, and by the way, Less Is More is an acronym for Literacy, Etiquette, Strength, and Self. Mm-hmm. And literacy being at the forefront of it is because, you know, I think that talking about stigmas, there's a stigma attached to illiteracy and it creates a sense of humiliation and embarrassment in people who don't know how to read at a, you know, um, at a uh, normal reading level, Mm -hmm. you know, and they, or at all for that matter, and they just choose to stay silent. And that's the worst thing that you do because you you could do because you're not going to get any better. You're not going to fix the problem. It's just going to continue on and probably create more problems for you Mm -hmm. later on in the future. So that's why we want to really put a strong focus on it, but not just literacy in the way of um, reading and writing and comprehension and that. The jewel and the crown of less is more is my preparation for the world forum. And I want it to be like a three-day excursion where I take these girls, mm. you know, and I we, we pick a place that we're going to go, let's just say uh, Bear Mountain, that's that's here, like in upstate New York or something. I like think that. so, yeah. yeah. That's right. I always mix up with Big Bear in, in California All and right. Bear Mountain here, okay. okay. And I want to get this huge cabin, and I want the girls to, you know, um, come out, and then every single day, there's, um, there's a... a Forum 1, Forum 2, Forum 3. And in Forum 1, I've got a career specialist and a financial expert teaching girls on the benefits of, uh, on you know, uh, just giving them information on careers that they might want to pursue later mm-hmm. on. Um, also, the financial expert teaching them, you know, the the benefits of leasing versus buying, the the benefits of having good credit, um, your first credit card, what that means, bank accounts. You know, I want to teach these girls all of the things that, you know, are, they're going to have to deal with in the real world at an earlier stage. Because as girls, no one's teaching us that stuff.